Good morning, tubers of the RC universe. Welcome to RC Heli Check UK for the very first video of 2024. I hope you all had a good Christmas and a happy new year. We are going to be starting the season with something rather good. I have been waiting for this model to do a review on it for a long time. It is a brand new kit. So without further ado, guys, let's get on with it. Right guys, as you know, I may have mentioned to you before that I've got something special that I'm going to be videoing and today is the day. I have been waiting for this for a while, like I said, and as you can see in the title, which you've obviously read, we are going to be doing a build, open the box, build, maiden, and uh, this is the model. We are looking at the new Align TB40 helicopter. This is basically the little brother of the recently released TB70 and TB60 that our line have done and they came out with this model uh, and bought up, they bought a smaller model out basically and this one is it we are basically doing this for Nick uh, Nick is one of the fellow club members who if you remember we did the build review on his ALZ RC R42 this is his model uh, he has kindly allowed us to use it once again to do a build video But this time it's going to be actually me that will be doing the build So let's get on with this guys I am going to be treating this video like it's for a complete beginner So I'm going to be going through everything that you're going to need to build this model And everything that you are going to require to get it all completed So without further ado let's get started Right guys so basic tools that you're going to need to complete this model are as follows you've got a good set of hex drive screws here screwdrivers screwdrivers screw drivers uh, and these are all ranging from 1.5 mil up to 3 mil i doubt you'll need the 3 mil one on a helicopter this small but it's always best to have a complete set for when you expand in your hobby and you want to be building something bigger so they are virtually the best things that you can buy these hex drive you need to get a good quality set align do their own which you can see here that i've got these are their own set they do a set of four um you've got one black one uh blue one purple and one red uh but these ones here are ones that i got from amazon um if you just look up hex driver kits these are uh marker right uh marker fire sorry um hex drivers they're just as good but a good quality set is what you also you know, need for something like this. Uh, ball link pliers, you're going to need those to snap the ball links on and off the helicopter because they can hurt your thumbs if you try and press them in and they're quite stiff, especially when they're brand new. So a good set of ball link pliers is a must. Also a normal set of pliers. As you can see, mine have been used extensively because they've got yellow paint on and anybody else that follows me knows that I've got a couple of models with the yellow paint on, so you know what they've been used for. But a good set of normal pliers is also a must. And also, thread lock. You do need two types of thread lock. Blue thread lock, which is pretty much standard that goes on every single bolt on the helicopter. But there are certain um, uh, bolts and uh, nuts that will need red thread lock, which is a more permanent uh, but we'll go through that uh, as and when we get to that stage also you need a good blade balancer for later on for when you're balancing the blades this is my Herobo blade balancer it is one that I have used for many many years and in my eyes it is the best blade balancer out there um, you can still get them they're quite hard to find but this is still like brand new um, it's ball raced uh, deathly accurate as far as I'm concerned a lot of people will say there's probably better ones out there, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the best one I have ever had, and I've still got it now, and I still use it. You're also going to need a, uh, this is a pitch gauge, a digital pitch gauge. These are around about £20, about $25 for you guys in the States. Um, but they are also necessary to set the pitch range on your model once it is complete. And then, of course, you're going to need a radio. 
the radio can be your own choice it all depends there are specific radios out there for model helicopters like the Mikado range they do a complete range of uh, radios specifically for um, uh, RC helicopters but the only downside to them is you pay for what you get and they are expensive and the fly by list units you can pay anything from 250 to 350 dollars per unit and if you've got a lot of helicopters uh, like myself then going from this which is what I fly over to something like that would be a very expensive ordeal because I'll need to change all my fly by list units um, but this is what I use this is my NX10 radio um, it is excellent I fly all my helicopters on this it's very easy to program very easy to set up and we'll go through the setup process on that um, also you are going to need a charger because I've not got my charger out at the moment I'm just using this as an example this is RC helicopter Richards charger and as you can see it's quite a nice bit of kit this has been built uh, by a chap called Ian Contessa he builds all these units um, but this is a ISDT charger and it runs on an individual power supply which is underneath here that plugs into the mains that then transforms uh, the power into this and then you can charge batteries as in Rich's case here he's got two 12S packs he flies Tron 7 helicopters which run on 12S um, but a basic charger like well I say basic a charger like this can cost you anything up to three or four hundred pounds um, but there are cheaper ones out there that you can buy as well which you need to charge your batteries so that is also a must because obviously without your batteries being charged then you, you, you can't fly and then of course you've got your TB40 helicopter the actual model that you want to learn to fly on and this like I say is brand new by Aligny um, it is their latest small range model and is ideal for anybody that would like to start flying model helicopters it is a good size um, it is great for spares a line are relatively cheap when it comes to space for their models compared to uh, other manufacturers like Tron or Saab um, you know the range of spares are always available for every model that you buy but depending on the type of model that you get dictates as to how much the spares are but there's always going to be a range of spares available for you if you crash your model and you will crash it there's no guarantee there's no two ways about it you're going to stuff it in uh, so you know it's nice to know that if that does happen you've got a full range of spares that you can um, get to repair your model with we've also got here this is T-Rex's other small model this is a 470L um, got this here basically as a comparison when the model is finished um, to see the difference between the TB40 and the T-Rex 470L one of the latest things that seems to be going on with most um, manufacturers lately is they don't provide you with paper versions of the um, instructions anymore it's more of a case of you have to go online and download them not a problem if you've got something like a laptop or an iPad you can download the instructions uh, off the Align website but it would be interesting to see if they've got uh, any kind of instructions inside it or whether you have actually got to download it so right let's let's have a look and see what we've got inside here shall we and uh, nicely sealed got tape just on this on the front here let's give that a slice <laughs> right oh. drop it down oh okay that sounds of that question we have got paper instructions marvelous we've got a good set of instructions there and it's quite a thick one quite a thick set typical uh, line kind of detail and that's pretty damn good actually you've got a, uh, a mixture of uh, line drawing and photographic images of the actual model in pretty damn good detail to be fair so that's that's good this I forgot to mention is what they call the super combo it has got everything with it minus the transmitter and the battery so you have got basically obviously the helicopter you've got the fly ballast unit you've got the servos the motor everything and the escapade which is what you need to obviously fly TB40 servo arm and main shaft washer 
Okay, for some reason we've got one servo arm that is in a bag with a main shaft spacer. Uh, so there's obviously a reason for that. Um, we have a 2024 Aligny calendar times two. Got aligning calendars with them. That's new. I've never seen that before. Not with an align kit. That's a nice bit, little feature there. Um, project quality control. Um, usual malarkey that you get with the uh, uh, the quality control on there. Important ESC notes. We'll read that later on. Then obviously you've got the main box full of other boxes. This is very very similar to the Align T Rex 470 setup. Um, electronic devices, frame set and main blades so we'll get each box open and see what we've got in every box right got the boxes out guys there's three boxes in total you've got one that's got main blades I'm guessing it's also got the boom in there as well uh, smaller box which is pretty heavy which has got all the electronic devices so that's going to have the servos, the motor and whatnot. and then you've got the rest of the frame in there we'll start off with the electronic box have a look and see what we get in there and as always you're met with the beast x logo which is the micro beast that's going to be the micro beast in there which it is all these bags are all nicely sealed up um version 5.4 good to know when you come to downloading the manual you need to know what manual um uh, for the micro beast because there are earlier versions out there and the manuals for some reason they're always written in a different way i don't know why they do that but um so when it comes to programming this you're going to need version 5.4 manual right so then you've got your electronic speed controller which is not an align um, uh, speed controller is actually a hobby wing speed controller which is pretty damn good to be fair uh, i much prefer the hobby wing escs they're a lot easier to program um they are really small in size. I'm not sure what size this is because I haven't got the right glasses on. Let me just get my, uh, my proper glasses so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh, it's a Platinum Pro and I can't read it because it's in the bag. We'll have another look at that later on. Um, but uh, yeah, that's great to know that you've got a Hobbywing ESC and not actually no line ESC. So that seems to be the way they're going now with these super combos then obviously you've got your motor um we have a very different silver topped align dominator bl 400 mx 1100 kv motor um very nicely wrapped up pins are already on there as well which is good i'm not too sure whether the pins are on the esc yeah they're already on there the only thing you've got to put on them basically is your battery lead on the electronic speed controller depending on what type of battery that you use um, but yeah another dominator motor again pretty damn cool and then your last box is going to be your servos you got four cyclic uh, four servos in there three cyclic servos which are the red ones and then you've got one tail rotor servo as well so that's all the electronic parts that come with the kit let's have a look inside this one this is the blade main blade box it isn't actually a box it's just like a cardboard tube um so let's pull 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 it out pull it out now that's it that's all that's in there so you've got your two main blades they look like 480 size blades um i'll have to measure those but they definitely look like four hang on let's have a look let's see what we've got on the uh 470 yeah, they're the same size as the 470s blade, so I'm, I'm guessing they're 480s, 460s or 480s. Um, these are going to need to be balanced. A lot of people are like, oh, they're already pre-balanced and whatnot, but you'll be surprised. Regardless of what people say that they're already pre-balanced, I always balance my blades anyway. It's better to be safe than sorry. The last thing you want to do is put blades on a helicopter, assuming they're balanced, and then when you spool it up, it just shakes because they're way out. So we'll balance those up later on. And then we've got our Elon T-Rex TB40 Boom, which is rather nice by the looks of it. It's I can't tell if it's carbon fiber or aluminium. It looks like aluminium, 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 aluminium. aluminium. But you've got a. I'm guessing that is the control arm for the servo for the tail rotor that's in there. Um, but yeah, it's quite a big boom. It's a lot wider than the boom that is on the 
T-Rex 470. Um, it looks to be a more rigid built model. Actually, this is carbon fibre. I can see the carbon fibre. We'll get it out. I'll look in a minute when we get it out. But looking at the patterning on that, it's either wrapped aluminium or is actually a carbon fibre tube. But again, we'll have a look in a bit. Now for the best bit. Let's see what we've got in here. This is the main frame. Now, one thing, let's move all these out the way so they're not actually uh, in the way here. <laughs> right. You can't see on my man. Yeah, as always, the main part of the box is taken up by the canapé. But, right, we've got a battery mounting tray and other bits and pieces on there as well. Um, we're going to have to obviously open these bits up but all the bags are numbered so when it comes to the instructions whatever part it is you need it will tell you what bag it will be from and nine times out of ten it's actually built in number order so you can't really go wrong so but that is one item which looks to be mainly the battery tray you've got the belt drive there and belt tensioner inside as well the belt drive is there's two belt drives in there looks like you've got a main belt drive which is going to, obviously going to be from the motor and then you've got the tail belt drive as well and then what else we've we got you've got your thread lock which is nah, it's, it's not so bad with this stuff but i prefer using my own uh, and then you've got that's nice you get a good um aerial uh splitter for your aerial if you're using say like Mikado, um they have quite long aerials on their v-bar neos uh, and whatnot, um, but you've got this aerial splitter that you can add onto your boom and it allows the aerials to be split at 90 degrees. That's good. Um, you've got your blade grip holder in there, various bits and pieces, zip ties. Again, I use my own normally. Servo arms in there as well, uh, bag of screws and bits and bobs. Again, the bags inside are all numbered up as well. Uh, and I'm guessing the main frame. Oh, hang on, no. We've got the shaft here. That's a different shaft. I've never seen a shaft like that before. That looks like a 500 shaft. Good job I've got a 500 swash plate leveller. Um, yeah, but that looks like a 500 size shaft. Stumpy. A stumpy shaft. Um, with the typical swash plate, your three connections that go to the, obviously, the servos. And then you've got two direct arms that go up to the main blade grips and then these two here will be for the mixer arms that are halfway up the shaft but that's that's a different shaft never seen anything like that before okay and then we've got the canapé and inside the canopy Georgian by the way it is the rest of the helicopter let's have a look nicely wrapped up that is a nice looking canopy I like that look at that that is well nice yeah you've got the rest of the frame parts inside there the skids and all the other bits and pieces there's quite a lot in there the rotor head and whatnot the rotor heads come complete but as with any model helicopter if your rotor head is pre-built it's always best to check over all of the bolts to make sure that they are all thread locked because they don't always thread lock the parts they usually they usually just um bolt them all together and assume that the modeler that is building it will be the person that goes through everything and thread locks the lock but that will need to be thread locked definitely like say you've got the skids and the mounting screws for it again that's different that's new never seen anything like that before but it's a one-piece plastic set by the looks of it um, good quality as always what else we got in here we got a center frame bearing housing by the looks of it for the main shaft and for the motor as well um, and other bits and pieces there for the framework this is going to be a good build this is then you've got your main gear drive which is a about 10, 8 to 10 mil thick by the looks of it, slant drive gearing, and then you've got your tail rotor gear drive as well. You've got two other drive units on there as well, belt drive units. I'm not sure what they are. I think they may be for the 
belt tensioner. Who knows? We'll find out when we put it together. And then in half, we have got the tail rotor blades, tail rotor unit, all complete again. We'll have to check that all over, make sure the bolts are all connected properly. Uh, boom supports as well in there, uh, and your tail fin, which goes at the back as well. So that's basically all your tail assembly by the looks of it. And then the last bag, MPT. Then your last bag has got what appears to be the side frames, uh, side frame rails, battery mounting rails, etc, etc, etc. One thing I've not seen in any of these bags is the pinion for the motor. It's probably in here somewhere, but we'll have to keep an eye out for that. I've not seen the pinion for the motor. It might not be a pinion. I think that's actually it there. I think that could be it. I think that is actually what goes on to the motor. We'll soon find out anyway. So that is everything that you get in the helicopter. Um, let's have a look at the canopy. We haven't looked at the canopy. That is really nice. You'll be able to see that really well in the sky. It's a nice, bright, vibrant colour. And it is fiberglass. It is not plastic. Rubber mounts already pre-installed as well. And yeah, that is a good quality canopy. Really, really nice that is. Really nice. I do like that. Good colour. Good colour. Anyway, so that is it. That is everything that you get in the TB40. There's a lot of bits and pieces in here. I'll have a look at the manual. I'm going to quickly go through the manual and see what we need to do. This video is going to be a combination of uh, live build and time lapse. Uh, all depending on um, like what has to be done. If it's something that's going to take a while, then I'll probably do that in time lapse. But I want to try and keep the video as short as possible. It may be a two-parter. We'll do the build video and then see how see how we're doing for time. And then it may be a case of changing uh, over to another video for setting up the electronics and flying it. So we'll see if we can get this one today done as the build. Get it all uploaded and then maybe part two will be setting up the electronics and going out and test flying it. Right, first thing it's telling us to get to, 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 to do is to make up the rotor head. Now, as you can see, the rotor head is already pre built, but it is, as with always, one of the things that you need to disassemble and then reassemble back together. That way, then you know that all the parts have been basically um, thread locked. So we'll go into a lapsy timey mode and get everything disassembled and then we'll reassemble it back according to how it needs to be. In fact, you know what? I'll just do a reassembly. I won't show you disassembling it in a minute, no point. So I'll, uh, I'll assemble the, the roads ahead back together properly with all the thread lock and I'll do that under time lapse mode. Right guys, I've thread locked all of the nuts and bolts that needed to be done. Um, the most fiddly ones were these ones here. There's some tiny, tiny little screws, really small, um, either side that have got to be thread locked in place. They were the fiddliest bits. Um, but I've greased all of the uh, thrust bearings and put blue thread lock on the bolts through the feathering shaft on the top of the actual uh, main head itself I don't know if you can see this because 
GoPros are not best close up but on the top you've got two lines and then if you can just see them on either side here one there and one there and then you've got the same on the top of the head if you line those two uh, lines up perfectly that is meant to represent zero degrees of pitch so just a little hint for you there guys when you uh, put one of these together so I'm going to do the swash plate now uh, take all the uh, the, the, uh, the more links off and thread lock all those and then we can carry on with assembly with the, with, the, with, the, with the assembly so I'll do that off camera and come back once this is all done and it's feed, fed it onto the shaft right guys there we go one complete rows ahead I've got it all thread locked and everything is all done now I measured the control links according to what it says in the instructions that section there needs to be seven millimeters and then it's approximately 36 millimeters from the center of this link to the center of that link and when roughly sort of like lining up the mixer arms which need to be basically straight um, like so at 90 degrees we have got these lines on the top that I showed you earlier on perfectly lined up together so in theory manually set that now is at zero degrees so hopefully when it comes to setting it all up on the fly the system it'll be a lot more straightforward right let's get on with the next stage guys the next stage is starting to build up the frame and uh, let's let's crack on with this model i'm looking this is really good this is the quality of this is awesome it's interesting to show you by the way that that shaft there i'm calling it a stumpy 500 shaft it's the same diameter as a 500 um but it's like two inches shorter it's a stumpy 500 shaft so when it comes to doing the swash plate leveling you will need a 500 uh, sized swash plate leveler to do that right next guys is the body of the helicopter which is the next part to be done um there are four or oh, sorry five different bags that we need for this one section only um 40b02 minus one 40b03 uh 40t01 uh as well um as 40b which is the main frame now you don't need all the parts like for example in this one here you just need this white bit here from this bag not that bit there just this bit here uh and also from this bag you don't need the belts you just need the belt tensioners which are in this bag here uh, obviously the bolts come with the frame and then also from this one you need the uh, mount for the fly barless system as well so although you need four different bags you don't need everything inside the bags so let's uh, crack on and go into lapsy timing mode and we'll build this part up if I get stuck with any issues I'll stop and I'll, uh, I'll let you know Right guys, you've got to be really careful when it comes to putting this together. Um, I found 
one of the problems with the actual uh, illustrations are it's very dark. Um, like for example, it's showing you how to assemble it all here, but these lines where it tells you to put things in God knows what, you can't see the holes, so you don't know which ones, uh, which holes everything has got to, get, got to go into. You've got to roughly sort of like gauge it um, by the actual design itself. Um, I mean, I thought that this went up here, but it turns out there's three bolt holes, uh, one underneath the other, and it actually goes in the bottom of one of that. This here, the mount for the boom as well, you can only just see where it's showing you to put them on here. It's it's really difficult to, to follow the illustrations, guys, because none of the holes are marked up very well at all. Um, but, I mean, they, they could have done with having these black dotted lines highlighted in white where it comes to where the airframes are and all the holes on the sides of the frames highlighted in white as well. Um, so it's pretty awkward to see uh, what it is you're actually doing and where everything has got to go. But it's manageable, but you just got to be very careful. So be aware of that, guys, if ever you come to build this model. Right guys, there we have the lower half main frame all done. We have a belt tensioner in there and two bearing holders, battery clip and fly barless unit mount, two um, canopy mounts and two canopy dampers all in this one frame. And something tells me that that should not be like that. Just bear with me a minute. Again, these instructions, they're easy to follow, but they're not easy to look at. No, that can't be like that. That needs to go the other side, I think. Right, so yeah, that's that bit done. Uh, next stage will be building the belt pulley set. Um, now, looking at this, that's what that is in there, which is already done. So I'll need to go through it just to make sure that all the nuts and bolts are all tightened up so I'll do that and then I'll come back when it's done. Right guys when it comes to doing the belt tensioner on the uh, model you've got to thread lock this pulley into this section here and then he dropped it on the floor because he's an idiot and then this pulley has to go into this section of the arm but then what you've got to do then is on this nut bolt here I should say when you thread like that into there this is spring there's a little tiny 90 degree angle at the top and at the bottom of the screw uh, spring split spring and then you've got a tiny little hole so the top one has to go into this little hole here and then the other bit needs to go on this inner hole here so what you've done is basically created tension in the spring when you tighten it up you should have that effect basically that is your tension if you haven't got any tension when you've done that bolt up then you've done it wrong basically well that's what you're looking for this is what keeps the tension on your tail rotor uh, on the belt for the tail rotor basically so yeah make sure you do that properly guys because if not and you install it you're gonna have to take the whole helicopter apart to get it back out again right guys we are on to the assembly of the belt pulley system and you've got, um, I've already gone through this, this is your auto rotation unit. Um, you've got your main belt drive there and then you've got your tail belt drive there um, which then fits 
into this here that way or is it that way I can't remember that way anyway um, but also what I like about this there's your main housing like I say that's where your main shaft goes into you get a choice of two pulleys you've got a 22 tooth and a 23 tooth pulley which goes on your motor uh, I'm gonna go for the 22 uh, on this one for Nick because Nick's style of flying um, it, this will suit him better than a 23 tooth so um, but yeah it's, it's nice that you actually get two different pulleys um, so you can choose whichever uh, pulley that you want so yeah that's a, another cool feature of this model Just a quick note guys, when you get the, uh, get the helicopter, you'll have this in there, which is a TB40 servo arm and main shaft washer. Uh, basically this packet, which is stapled to this piece of paper, has got an extra long length servo arm for your rudder servo, uh, instead of the usual standard one. So it gives you one extra hole to play around with. Now I'll only put this on temporarily because when it comes to doing the fly system, this will be removed because I'll have to mechanically centre them all first um, but I'm just putting it on there so that it's there and I don't lose it basically you also get a, an extra uh, shim for the main shaft as well to clear any slot that you may get in the main shaft when you install it into the gearbox so another good thing to keep an eye out for when you are building you can see it's quite a hefty servo as well for the tail rotor this is actually a 500 uh, size helicopter servo that you would normally get on the tail rotor it's one of the five uh, align um, 53 535m tail rotor servos this is so for a smaller helicopter you've actually got a hell of a size servo for the tail rotor on it and like I say this would normally be on a 500 or 550x so you've got plenty of power in your tower rotor server when it comes to uh, tower rotor server movement. Right guys, one of the things you've got to watch with these servo mounts, uh, not so much the cyclic one, the uh, sorry, the elevator one, but the pitch and the aileron servo mounts, you've got to be careful when you put them in, into the mounting holes, make sure you back off this one screw here, um, because it's threaded what it goes into, if it goes, if you, if you don't undo it, it basically fouls against this section of the airframe here, and it stops you uh, able. Uh, stops you from being able to do it up properly. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. So yeah, when you put these on, just make sure you either take them out completely, or back them out so that they don't foul against this bit because you don't get a true uh, mating against the two faces 
if that screw is all the way in you don't realize it so make sure you like say remove them or back them out so that you can get these two screws that hold these in uh, lined up perfectly with the mounting plate on the bearing block Right, on that section we have now got the servo mounts all fitted uh, for the cyclic and we've also got the anti-rotation bracket fitted which is uh, metal is offset on the servo. Um, it looks a bit deceiving but it is central. Um, it's just the way that the servo is mounted it is like offset. Um, we've got the tail rotor, uh, sorry the tail rudder servo fitted um the fly bias mount fitted the receiver mount fitted if you've got one belt drives are in on the tail and the main uh, for the motor <clears throat> and the next stage is to be fitting the side frames so we'll get them put on and then uh, i'll come back to you when they're uh, when they're all done Undercarriage now fitted and side frames now fitted. I tell you what, guys, this helicopter goes together so well. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the uh, next stage. We're going to go and do the motor now. Um, we have got the 22 tooth pulley, which will now be mounted onto the motoir. Um, so that's the next stage. Then get the motor fitted onto the motor mount, which is this bit here. Uh, and then from there we're going on to mounting the tail boom so we'll get this bit all sorted out first and then uh, we'll go from there Right guys, we have got quite far with this model. We are well, uh, four hours into the build and as you can see, there's been a fair bit done. Uh, all the frames all done, uh, bearings are all mounted, motors mounted, undercarriages mounted, etc, etc, etc. We've got the tail boom left to do, which is what I hate. I hate tail booms uh, when it comes to belt drives because you don't know whether you're going to get that twist in there the wrong way and Vika Verke, so that's the next stage. Putting the belt and drive through the tail 
boom and getting that fitted and then we'll be on to more than likely fitting the tail rotor unit itself so let's uh, let's get on with it Oh guys, bit of a fiddly thing getting the old belt through, but I got it in. Uh, it is really tight going into the bracket with a slot that you slide it into. Um, but once you get it in place, there's a hole in the side there, and then the black tail boom bracket uh, basically tightens up and holds it in place. So, a bit fiddly, and like I say, the actual slot in the boom that goes into the white bracket at the front is pretty tight but you, you need to give it a good firm push to get it in but once it's in like i say you can tighten up the black bracket which is the one at the back and that holds it in place stops it moving right next stage of the build is the tail rotor assembly um once again a bit like the tail rotor or the main head it is only <clears throat> lightly put together you'll need to disassemble it and then basically reassemble it to make sure that everything is all tight so I'll disassemble it off camera and then I'll reassemble it uh, in a time lapse mode. We are storming along quite nicely with this TV40 guys. Tail rotor and boom and, and it's, it's all fitted. Next stage we'll be doing the main rotor head, getting that put in place and the main drive gear as well as the servo arms that I've got to make up to the uh, swash plate. So I'm going to do all that now and then get all that installed. There's a lot of time lapse in this as you can see guys. If I'd have done it normal time without any time lapse, we are five hours into the build, just over five hours into the build. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping a combination of real time and time lapse is gonna make this probably about an hour long, I don't know, maybe less, but we'll see. So yeah, we're almost finished, almost complete with part one of this build. Uh, part two, uh, will be the installation of all the electrics and setting it all up and then maiden it basically.
and there we have it guys the brand new tb40 from align and i'm not gonna lie i've really enjoyed building this model i've still got a bit to do so this is going to be part one uh, of this two parts series for this model but part one was basically going to be the unboxing and building of this model but as you can see she looks pretty damn good i am liking this um i've not got the 470 here with me but looking at it as it is i would say that this is bigger than a 470 definitely um and it's certainly a lot more meatier when it comes to the build we've got a bigger boom it is wider at the back um we've got a more rigid canopy as well that is some nice fiberglass there it may have a little bit of a weak spot there when it comes to pulling that apart uh, to get the batteries in and out so whether it needs to be reinforced there or what i don't know or if they can get some quick release clamps that allows you to pull the canopy off without sort of like stretching it because i think that bit will that will probably start to crack after a bit of time but the actual build was awesome i mean it's turned out to be a really nice model i've still got all the electrics and everything to put in it that is going to be for part two uh, along with the setting up and the maiden for this model but i think in total marks out a 10 for build quality i'm going to give this a firm nine i would give it a 10 if it weren't for the destruction manual the instructions were a little bit difficult to follow not because of the way that it was all put together it was it was all laid out nicely but the print on it was was quite thick and in some places you couldn't see where there was indicating what screws went where you couldn't see the holes uh in the actual drawings to where you needed to put stuff so it was pretty much guesswork and looking at the actual side frame and you know roughly working out where it was but apart from that it's gone together really nice it is a really rigid model and i think it's going to be an awesome little model of fly nick is going to love this this is it for part one i hope you've enjoyed this i hope it's helped you influence you towards getting something like this for yourself it is ideally suited to somebody in getting into helicopters for the first time it was it is going to be a good helicopter as a first helicopter for someone there's no two ways about it right size is going to have stability it's going to be nice and stable and it builds really nicely so yeah thanks for watching guys look out for part two which will be in the next day or so and click the old bell ding ding dong notification like subscribe do all that malarkey and i will look forward to see you in the second video for this awesome little helicopter thanks for watching guys see you soon